All right, we got some people here. Hello. Good evening to you all. Today we are going to be playing some Game Boy Advance games and some original Game Boy games. I've got a few stacks of games that I want to try and play through and I've also got out pretty much all of my GBA games here as well. So there's loads to check out. And the reason I'm doing this stream, if I just pop it on phone cam mode for a second, the reason I'm doing this, hopefully the wire's long enough, is because I recently got this really cool little thing here called the GB Operator, which is basically a Game Boy Advance cartridge that you can use on the computer and it can play every Game Boy and every Game Boy Advance game. And fingers crossed, if this works well for streaming, this should be my new go-to way of capturing games to play on here and over on YouTube as well. So let's see whether it goes okay. As you can see, it's a really simple little piece of kit. There's a micro USB or maybe USB-C port in the back there. Literally, that goes into the USB port on the PC and all the software is included. So if I... Let's back out of this a second. I was just playing a game just to test it. So if I change that to... I haven't got a full screen one, but... No, it's not going to work. Anyway, you can see a bit of the program. So basically it shows you what game's inserted. So if I take Yoshi's Island out, it'll say please insert a cartridge. You put the game in and it comes up with a box art for the game, tells you whether it's an official cartridge or not, and also tells you whether it's a read or write cartridge. So if I put in a homebrew game, I've got one right here. This one should say that the cartridge is rewritable so it doesn't know homebrew games it says unofficial cartridge but it does say that it's read write which is really cool and you can actually play the games they do still run it just doesn't understand what they are so if you've got any carts like that you can kind of flash your own games to them if you really wanted to anyway and another thing it tells you whether a game is actually official or not so let me go back on full screen for a second so i had this game metal slug for the gba and I was always a bit unsure as to whether this was an official game or not, but if we put this in the GB operator, unofficial cartridge, and it's a rewritable cartridge. So the people that sold that to me for £10, they ripped me off, basically. It's not official. And it doesn't work either, or at least it didn't when I tried it last. Let's see whether it can actually launch if we click launch. I'm not sure if it will. So it is really good from that sense as well to actually find out whether you've got an official or an unofficial cartridge. And as well, when we're loading the game up, you can see that the LED on the side there flashes green. And I wonder if I... No, you can't see that other window. So a window just popped up saying integrity check failed. We were unable to confirm the integrity of this cartridge. Would you like to try playing it anyway? And with this game, all we get is a white screen, so that is not very fun for you guys to watch. So let me back out of that, and then I will greet you all, so let me just back out of that. So that is a good thing, by the way. So if we go back on full screen cam, you can see when it's on standby, you've just got a nice little white LED instead. And we've got Gion and to the gates in the chat. Hello, good evening. So today we are looking at this little piece of kit called the GB Operator, which is a new Game Boy cartridge, basically a USB Game Boy cartridge, and it comes pre-installed with software so you can play all of your original carts on there, but it can also tell you whether your cart is real or fake. So let's put in Super Mario Land for the original Game Boy. And if I've set this up properly, I should be able to click that button there and OBS will be clever enough to put it into the original Game Boy aspect ratio, which it did. There's also a load of options on here as well, but um, I'd have to change the window, but I'm going to cover all this in the video anyway. So let's uh, put the sound on, see whether you guys can actually hear that. Is that a bit too loud? Let's try to turn it down to about there maybe. How's that sound? Maybe turn it down a little bit more. 
I've been good. Just glad to be done with work for the day. Because I was getting uh, some of the controls are a bit weird. Sounds a bit too low. How about that? Unfortunately, the A and B buttons are mixed up, so let me see whether I can reconfigure that. Gamepad settings. I'm playing it on an Xbox One controller as well, so it feels very strange. Let's see. A, B, up, left, down, right, L, R. Select, start. Save. Yes, Game Boy time. Not, not really Game Boy time. Hey, Gian, thanks for the sub. I think having at least that other GB, GB operator is essential for any Game Boy collector. Yes, I believe so as well. So, Reanimator, as you just joined, let me show you what we're actually doing today because we're not playing on the actual Game Boy, we're playing on this, which is the GB operator. Or, like Gion said, the GBX cart is kind of similar. It's basically a USB cartridge for the PC, which lets you back up your games. You can play them, you can transfer your save files, you can flash homebrew games on and off there and stuff. But it was the software that I was really curious about because if this works, I'm actually going to be using this for actually... Um, playing and recording all my games going forward. So, let's see whether the buttons are fixed. Yes, that feels a lot better. Cool. And Alex, if you're still there, hope Resi goes well for you. Are you still on Resi Zero? There's a load of different options with this as well, where you can change things like the colour scheme. You can change how the um, LCD interacts. You moved to Resi 2. Is that because you gave up on Zero because you hated it so much? <laughs> I thought you might. It is a very frustrating game. Resi 2 is a lot better. Yeah. It's just so tedious having to constantly drop the items and swap characters. Gone Mad Train, hello. Thanks for joining us tonight. And I'm going to play a little bit of... And Skittles and Fiddles! I want to help you set a few things up that always bug me. Okay, well... Hopefully this new solution will look a lot better than what I've done in the past. Because... Yes, I actually have got accurate colours enabled. Let me just come out this game and I'll show you. So if I bring up another... Let's try display capture. This might look weird for a second, bear with me. But if I bring that over here... Just so you can see what options there are on here. So, can you see that okay? It might be a bit small. Let's see if I can make it bigger. I know this is a really awkward way of doing it. I probably should have shared the window instead, but you get the idea. Okay, cool. You can see it. So, on here, if we scroll down a bit, there is a color correction option. So if I start this as disabled, and I know where you were going with this, and it bugs me as well, so I'm glad I've found a solution to it. Um, right, I've got a GBA, a Game Boy Color game here, so let's put this in. If we launch this. Not sure how it's going to show with both of them. I didn't plan on using the screen like this, but I hope this works, because it'll give you a good idea of the difference it makes. Just bear with me for a second because it's going to look a bit messy. So. There. It went bigger when I launched the game. Right. There's the game. Let's, let's start a game. And I'll, ju I'll just skip through this so we can get to the intro. There's another really cool thing, if I move the camera down here. There's a fast forward button. So if you're ever bored on any of the cutscenes, you can go blah, 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 skip through it all like that. So we can skip through all this. 
and as you can kind of see the colors are quite garish so what you can do is open up the menu again so you can see the menu there and if you scroll down to color correction if you choose Game Boy Color and press save look at the massive difference this makes there you go fixed how's that will that be better for YouTube I think it will be a lot nicer look how much nicer the colors look yeah that's that's basically gonna fix all the issues I had because even playing it through the GameCube the colors were were kind of messed up yeah extreme sports I got it the other day at the um, London gaming market off my friend Quang at Sobe Tech. He did me a really good deal on it. Anyway, I guess we can play this for a little bit because, um, yeah, I haven't really played that much of it. So There's a few other really interesting things as well if I bring up the menu. So this, this is why I wanted to do this stream because it's a really interesting little device and I've got a lot I want to talk about. So if we bring this back up here, there's loads of other options as well. So there was something interesting that I saw there's an audio filter to get rid of like the harsh like Game Boy sound. I guess this isn't the best example. But it does make a big difference in some games, especially GBA ones. So apparently having it on about 20%. You can kind of hear how it's... Professor Sea Dog. well thanks for dropping by anyway. Let's see, what did you have to say? Wish I could stick around, but I have too much work to do. No, thought I'd at least stop and wish you a great stream. Thank you, I appreciate that. Hopefully work's okay for you. Don't work too hard. So, uh, what other options are there? There's frame skip, obviously. This is something interesting, remove idle loop. I don't know whether you can read it on the screen. It might be a bit small. I've pretty much got it as big as I can. Actually... Hey, Starlax here as well. Hey, Starlax. This is kind of a experimental stream. I'm trying to... Hey, that's a lot better. Yeah, I remember when this came out. So, on the on the 3DS, I should say. There we go. You can see the settings a bit easier now. So, this is what I thought sounded really interesting. Rem uh, idle loop removal reduces system load by optimizing the idle loops sections in the code where nothing happens I don't really know what that actually does or how that helps maybe it reduces lag or speeds up loading not that the Game Boy really has much loading going on it might just be for weaker computers maybe there's loads of other stuff in here though solar sensor level for Boktai so you can set how much sunlight the cartridge sees. This is interesting. Game Boy Player Rumble. So if you're using a controller, like I am, like this Xbox controller here, you can actually have rumbling games as well. So I might try something like Pokemon Pinball in a bit. See whether you can actually feel that. And there's also, I guess for speedrunners or for tool-assisted speedruns and things, is allow opposing directional input. So that means pressing left and right at the same time. So I'm not really sure when that would come in handy or not. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd get anywhere playing Boktai on the uh, GameCube. So here's probably the most interesting thing. Interframe blending. So it's probably not the best game to show this as an example, but like if you look at the... Oh, you can't see anything. There you go. If you look at the girl's hair, the way it bounces up and down, the pixels are very much on one level and then the next. Or you can either look at her hair or look at two things just below the hair that are also bouncing up and down. Thank you, way forward. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Is this the first example of Game Boy Jiggle physics? Anyway, I was saying, yeah, the... Um, I've lost my train of thought now. The way the pixels are moving are like exactly one to one. But if you turn on the, I'm back in the menu now. You won't you won't see it. If you turn on frame blending, uh, where is it? Into frame blending. So there's a few different options. There's a accurate LCD ghost in mode. So 
I don't know whether you can tell on the stream or not, but you can kind of see how... Or, like, look at the goalpost. You can see how the colours are kind of blending together as you move. Or you can also set it to smart, which is really good. And this one basically does it only on certain pixels that are supposed to be blended together. So anything that was trying to use it for, like, like transparency effects or anything like that. Anyway, let's play a bit of this game, because I haven't really played that much of it before. So, yeah, hopefully that was interesting to you. I've been meaning to check this out for quite a while now. So, let's sign up. Yeah, I'm playing what I'm most known for. Or what I want to be known for. I'm really sad I don't have my, um... Oh, I just realised I'm on the GBA mode. If I do that, now you should be able to see everything. I was wondering why a bit was cut off. Yeah, I really wish I had my display cabinet like I used to. I used to love having that and being able to see all the games, but... No, they're all just in boxes now. I do have a, a few boxes full of Game Boy Advance games to play as well, so... Maybe we can have a look through some of them later. Yes, hey editor. Both the Alexes are here now. Where's the where's the other one? Right, I've lost my train of thought again. Let's go and do some of these sports activities anyway, now we've signed up. So I kept my display case, but I've got no room for it. How's the sound? Is the game too quiet or is it okay? Hopefully it sounds okay. So anyway, here's where you get the different events. So you've got skateboarding. Volume's good. That's good. It's a bit loud in my headphones, but I guess that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Heroes tubs full of GBA games. I'm sure I've done that at some point. I've just got a few of these plastic trays to go through. But yeah, at the minute all my Game Boy original games are just loose. They're on the shelf at the top over there. That way. There. I might go and have a route through later. I've picked out a few that I want to play tonight. Including a few that I'm interested in. I also want to play this as well, which I also picked up at the market. Rhino Rumble. Has anyone heard of that one? That'll be interesting to try in a bit. Game Boyts. Right, so these are the different events anyway. I haven't really played much yet, have I? So skateboarding is kind of awkward from what I've played so far. Oh yeah, and if you're getting annoyed, there's a really cool thing with this system I'm using. You can put it in fast forward. I was actually killed the sound altogether. There you go. Look how fast I can run now. Whee! Let's see what that one is. Inline skating. That one's quite fun. It's kind of like a WarioWare minigame. Oh no, I've lost I've lost all the sound now. Or oh, resetting it help. It didn't like me doing that, I've lost the sound. Huh. No, it's gone. Let's try launching it again. Is there sound? No, I don't know when the sound starts. No. Right, I'll try closing it and open it again. This is all part of the plan, guys. I've been um, trying to figure out how this program works and what I want to talk about in the video. So now we've got sound. See, when we play it and fast forward from the start... There you go, Starlack. You get some nice fast forward Game Boy music. I like the ability to be able to fast forward. Alright, see you, Alex. Hope you have a good stream. Have more fun with Resi 2 than you did with Zero. Alright, now we've got to go and do this again. I won't fast forward this time.
I haven't even got far enough in this game to actually save yet, so I've done this intro like five times now. Right. I'll just go and do one of the ones that I know is fun. So it's kind of like a mini RPG game with sporting sections as well. So let's go and talk to her. Hey babe! If you want to join the inline skaters, you need to complete this course first. Pick up all six flags. It's actually really fun. This one reminds me of, um, if I can remember how to do it. It reminds me of that WarioWare game where you have to duck under. There's some things you have to duck under, some things you have to jump over. It's really fast. You have to be really, um, yeah, you can grind rails and as well and stuff. Hey, I'm doing a lot better than I did last time. Well, yeah, jump over the things on the floor. Have I done it? Wow, I did it first try. Awesome. And then you get a rank at the end. I don't know how you could possibly take two minutes on that. It's a new record. Take on the next trainer. I think this one's skydiving. Oh, I haven't tried this one yet. Okay, let's see what we have to do here. Collect. I, I kind of skipped the instructions here. Okay. Don't crash into the bins. So you can press the B button to pick up speed. And crash into stuff. I mean, it gives you pretty much as much of a view distance as the Game Boy Color could manage, but it still feels kind of tight. Ah! Uh, Looks like she's riding on a sword. Yay, how did I do? Badly, I think. Oh, apparently I did some tricks. Flag zero out of six. Were there flags to find in that one? Very nice, apparently. Okay, let's go try the next one. Let's see what this one is. Surfing. I tried surfing. I couldn't really figure out what to do in that one. Hold left and right to spin. Aim for a super jump in the bubbling portion of the wave. Try and pick up twitchy shakes, then press the A button to spend them for an offensive attack. I'll figure it out. You can crush enemies after you land on them with a mighty jump, sure. But anyway, how does the quality of the output look? Because if this looks good, I'll use this going forward for playing Game Boy games. I think it looks and sounds really good, on my end. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Do I need to go up? Oh, okay. Oh, no! <laughs> ah! I'm not getting this one. I did the other one really easily. Okay, do not press A. A just makes you fall off immediately. Right. Whee! Oh dear. I'm really not doing very well on this. I think I'm going too fast. I need to... Oh dear. I failed horribly. Oh, that's good. I know you saw it, Gion, but for anyone who's just joined, we're playing it through this, the Game Boy Operator, which is like a USB, uh, basically a USB Game Boy cartridge for the PC. It comes with its own software. I'll be doing a video on it soon, but I just wanted to see, like, is it the best way that I've got to record Game Boy games? I think it is, actually, because it means I don't have to sit back there and play on the GameCube. Um, and it just looks really good. They use the wave table to mimic guitar sounds. That's interesting. Right, two left. Oh, 
What is this one? Skyboard. Okay, I haven't done this one before. Cool, we got a skydiving one. Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah, I have done this one. This one's pretty cool. So, you basically go over these shapes and then hold down B and then press the directions of the shapes to pull off the tricks. And obviously watch out for the birds and stuff. So, up, down, down, down. It's actually a really cool idea for a minigame. It's kind of like DDR, but in the sky. Down, down. Yeah, it seems a lot more um, easy to get set up and running rather than having to turn the GameCube on, boot up the action replay, boot into Swiss, boot into Game Boy interface, and then sometimes I boot in the wrong Game Boy interface and the um, resolution and stuff is all wonky or the capture card doesn't see it properly. So, Yeah, if this works well, this is a huge improvement. Ah, I messed up. Okay, you can move up and down as well. Oh, that's it. I did play this one, actually. There's, um, like a target you have to aim for on the floor. Oh, yeah, perfect. Look at that for a landing. Oh, I haven't tried that one, actually. The one I use is... HF, is it? High frame rate? I know that there's a few different ones I've got. I've got the speedrunning one, HF one, or just the basic Game Boy interface, but I didn't really care for all the other features that one had. Right. This one, I got really confused on the first time I tried to do it. This is the skateboarding challenge. So what you need to do is kind of do a half pipe motion with the D-pad as you're going around, and then you can spin in the air when you land. Okay, what was the LL version? Or what, what does that correspond with now? It's still a really cool piece of kit. Oh yeah, there is something else I want to try... Ah, damn it. There is something else I want to try in a minute. Oh, the other thing you can do on here is grab onto the edge of the, um, uh, the, edge of the half pipe as well. If you time it right. Or if you press A, is it? Whoops, I don't got there yet. There's a few other things you can do as well, like if you stood on the floor, you can double tap to do a little kick flip. That's it. And if you let go at just the right time. But I made the mistake of playing this minigame for too long before. You have to come off before two minutes is up, else your run doesn't count. Because I remember playing it for like six minutes and wondering like, why am I still able to keep going? So I should probably... Oh, come on, one more spin! Let's see if I can get a fun combo. Ah, oh, almost. So close. Right, I should probably try and come off now, so... If I can get enough speed up... I'm getting worried I won't be able to get off now. There we go. And then go across the finish. And that is how you do the skateboarding challenge. And that is all of the test areas done. And that's as far as I've ever got in the game. Now that you've qualified, you're free to roam the island. If you want to challenge somebody, just step right up and do it. If you can beat their current standings, you'll knock them out of the competition and win their medals. Whoever ends up with the most medals at the end of the day will become the Extreme Sports Champion. Now before you run off, remember that it's important to visit a save station often. If you don't, all your progress will be lost when you turn off the game. Press the select button to see if there's one close by. Ah, so low latency is... Okay, oh wow, cool, we've got a nice little map as well, so... I'm guessing the save stations are those... Um, flags. Is there one around here? It seems like a really good game though. I'll definitely play more of this. Welcome to the save station. Save and continue. There is no previous data. So that's really cool. Um, there is something else that I wanted to try out on this emulator. So, well, emulator, software, whatever you want to call it. So now we've saved. 
if I turn back on display capture, somewhere, I think on this data tab. So, yeah, if you can see that, store data on your computer, create a digital replica of your collection. Game files can be used with your preferred emulator, but as well as that, so this is going to basically generate a ROM of the game. So I guess I can put it in that capture folder. Oh no, have fun writing your essay. I'm a bit weird, I actually used to really enjoy writing essays. But yeah, go and do some studying. I don't want to be the reason that you get kicked out of uni. <laughs> right, I think that's saved, but there is a way... Oh, there you go, download save as well. Transfer a duplicate of your save data from the cartridge to your computer, then you can back up a save file or edit it with an external program. So, yeah, you can also get the save file for the game as well, so let's put that in there too. So there's loads of really cool things you can do with this. So if I bring that over here, you can see I've started recording for the shapeshifter. There you go. So we've got the Game Boy ROM, which you can use in a, whatever emulator you want. And we've also got the save file. And you can transfer that back onto the game as well. So if you have some way of editing save files on the computer, you can transfer it. You can upload it here. Oh, you can't see that. It's off the top of the screen. You can upload the save file back to the cartridge, which is really cool. And that photos bit, I want to try that in a bit as well. So that is, if you're using the Game Boy camera, you can actually get photos that you've take, taken on the camera as JPEGs. So really interesting stuff. Right, that is enough of extreme sports. I'm not actually sure where my Game Boy camera is, which is a shame. I probably should have tried to find it beforehand. Let's play. What should I play? I'm saving Sonic when I've got a full game. Anyone got any recommendations or anything you want to see me play? Game Boy or Game Boy Advance? Let's see if this is a legit game. Yes, official cartridge. <laughs> Repungent Booty. Is that a sequel? Actually, I haven't really tried any homebrew games. Well. Alright, Kirby. Let's see if we can find Kirby. I've got three, three big plastic tubs of GBA games here. Let me see whether I can find it. Oh, I might play a bit of that later. Kuru Kuru Kuruin. That's a great game. Right, bear with me one second while I try and find something Kirby related. <laughs> that one's definitely fake. Look at that. Shall I put that in and see what it says? It's not even going to recognise it at all. Unknown game, unrecognized cartridge. Great. Oh, that'll be interesting to try as well, Drill Dozer. Because apparently you can um, use the rumble on the controller. Oh, I'm finding so many games I really love in here. Donkey Blocks is a great game as well, if you like puzzle games. Editor, if you're still here. Donkey. I want to do a video about them at some point. So, I think Kirby is not in this box. Not Kirby, but there's Herbie. Close enough, right? Such a niche game to pirate. I've got loads of weird games that are fake, but there's no reason for them to be. There we go, found it. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. That is the one you asked for, isn't it? Amazing Mirror. Oh, this was this was the fake one. I've got two copies of this. There's a fake one and a real one. So let's put it in GBA mode. 
it's nearly Kirby time. It's loading. If you can see on there, there's a white bar at the top that fills up. Yeah, GBA games were so... There was just so many fakes out there. There's a there's a really fake version of R-Type 3 I've got. But there's there's much worse. I could probably do a video on just fake GBA games. There's a fake of Summon Knight. <laughs> Pokemon Ruby. For some reason, just just plain grey. Um, Super Mario 3, which is literally just the NES game. Right, let's see whether this plays. Yeah, it does. Let's just check. Might need to change that to Game Boy Advance covers. There we go. Yeah, looking at the PCBs is probably a good idea. I do have Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland, and I'm pretty sure that one's legit, so maybe we can play a bit of that after. I couldn't find my official copy of Amazing Mirror, so hopefully this works. Yeah, there wasn't that many Game Boy Color bootlegs. I hate how unreliable the AI is in this game. I love I love the game though, and the music's fantastic too. Oh yeah, I forget it doesn't have the fun pack extra abilities like dashing to use the um, the weird like cylinder thing. Some people don't really seem to like Nightmare in Dreamland that much. I'm not really sure why. I really enjoy it. Maybe because it is literally just okay. Let's have you instead. Maybe because it's literally just a copy of the NES game with nicer graphics. But anyway, how does this look in terms of frame rate, resolution? Do you think it's going to be good enough to use for YouTube? There's a treasure chest, but it's already open. I didn't see at the start. Was this a save file that I've already... I can't remember how to get the map up. That's how you call your buddies to come and help you out. The frame rate and the intro stuff to the bit. I don't know whether that's just because I'm streaming. Because it, look, it looked okay on the actual program I'm looking at. But it might be that the stream was a bit laggy. I was at 3%. Wow. I have finished this game before. But I think that was on my other cartridge. Apparently this one's the unofficial one. I've got two boxes for it as well for some reason. I love this fighter ability. Yeah, and you can do the up attack as well. I can't remember how you get the map on this game. I know the map was kind of awkward to use because the doors don't always line up. Hey, thanks. No, I want to keep my keep my fighter ability. Yeah, it does get really difficult to find the rooms towards the end of the game. Because the map doesn't really line up with where the doors are. Oh. But in terms of responsiveness, it feels great. I, I was a bit worried because obviously it's running on an emulator once it dumps the ROM. I was a bit worried that it might feel a bit laggy. Compared to playing it on the GameCube, but it feels fine. Oh, I wonder if I can charge up to break them. Ah! Not if that happens. Or do I need something even stronger? Yeah. Maybe hammer? Anyone remember how to get through those blocks there? You have to find the maps first. Oh, okay. It has been a long time since I played this, so I don't remember that much. 
Probably one of my least played Kirby games. Is anyone looking forward to the the remake of Return to Dreamland on the Switch? Or Kirby's Adventure Wii as it's known here in the UK. What does that rainbow door do? Oh, okay. I kind of remember now. So this is like a hub. And you can go through all the different doors to sort of open up the different areas that you can visit. It's kind of like a weirdly linear Metroidvania. You never played Return to Dreamland in the first place. Oh, that's good. It's a really good game. It's a lot better than Star Allies anyway. Ah, I wasn't looking! <laughs> I was trying to read the chat and I walked off the pit. Uh, this game always confused me. I love... how oh, it's like a Metroidvania Kirby. It can get a bit confusing, yeah. Especially because of how bad the map was. If they'd have worked that out, it would it would have been a lot better. Oh, can you not hear the game? Can you guys hear the game? Ah! Maybe if I turn it up slightly. I, maybe it turned down. I can see it on my... I can see it on my um, OBS list. Diablo head, are you sure you haven't got your your speakers muted? It's fairly quiet. Ah, oh, that might be my fault. Uh, I can try and put it about there. Does that sound better? The games are all playing a bit too fast. Hmm. I wonder if that's something to do with the limiter thing and the options. There was something in the options to... Oh, I can't even one. Awesome. I find it weird that they put some of the extra um, abilities in, but not all of them. Like, you can do the up slash, but you can't... You can't do the stab if you dash first, but you can if you hold down. I guess they've just changed them slightly. You can't do the down stab. I keep pressing the wrong button. I think I've set the wrong button up. Right, let's see. In... Right, can you guys see that set in screen? Let's see if there's any options to make them play at the right speed. So... There is this, idle loop, if I change that to don't remove, maybe? Frame skip's disabled, so it shouldn't be making anything faster. It does seem a little fast, yeah. Uh, do you think it's because it's trying to make the frame rate 60 frames a second exactly, but the actual GBA is a bit less? Found a secret door. I wonder what all my other Kirby's are up to. Is there anything down there, or is that a bottomless pit? It's fast with Mario Land. That's something I can do some testing with before I make my full video. I remember the uh, Super Game Boy for the SNES. The first release of that was too fast as well, and then they brought out a second version in Japan, which fixed the speed issues. So it'll be interesting to know whether the slightly faster game here runs at the same speed as the original um, Super Game Boy. There we go, there's a weird map that barely tells you anything. Right, and we'll probably leave it there, I guess. Oh, I didn't mean to reset, I meant to go back to the menu. So, there is another GBA game that I wanted to test to see whether the um, the flicker works properly. I wanted to try one of the F-Zero games. If I can find any.
should have prepared this in advance. Bear with me a second. I've got GP Legend. I don't remember whether that one has the same map as uh, Maximum Velocity or that. Well, I can't find that one. This will be an interesting test. I think Warrior Wear Twisted will work. Oh yeah, I've still got those settings open. I haven't gone anywhere yet anyway. Should we try Warrior Wear Twisted? I doubt this is going to do anything. So, let's let's try. Yeah, I haven't organised my GBA games at all. So, it's not saying anything. Okay, it has seen, it has found it. Where are twisted? Let's try and launch it and see what happens. And Tilt and Tumble as well. I've seen people playing Tilt and Tumble on the GameCube, that's always fun. It does take a bit of time now to um, like rip the game off the cartridge. You can see that bar filling up. And you can't actually start playing until it gets to 100%. So that can be a little bit frustrating, having to wait for that. It seems like GBA games take a lot longer than original Game Boy, which I guess is to be expected. But I'm not really expecting this to work, but we'll see. I think I've put start and select on the wrong buttons. Oh, I haven't got any more save on here either. I think I remember the save, the um, the battery died on it, but no, it doesn't do anything as expected. So tilting it like that should make that list of characters move, and obviously it doesn't do anything on the controller either. Well, I guess we can listen to the awesome Mona's Pizza theme music while I look for F-Zero. Yeah, that's what I thought. The frame rate for the GBA is slightly less, isn't it, than 60? That might be why the frames are juddering slightly. But I'm also not sure whether that's just because the PC is also running the capture software at the same time. Anyway, right, I'm going to try and find F-Zero. I need to find a way of organizing them really. There's another one of those gyro games. Except that one's rubbish. Has anyone played Yoshi's Universal Gravitation? Or... I can't remember what the American name is for. It wasn't great though. There's Bokthai. As we were saying about the sun sensor earlier. I can't find F-Zero anywhere. That's a fun game that not enough people know about. Go Go Beckham. Yoshi's Topsy Turvy, yeah, that's it. Um, oh, let's see. Let's see whether this works. This is one of those, like, 101 games. I'm kind of curious what it's going to show up as. Yeah, Universal Gravitation is really not good. I was actually playing Yoshi's Island earlier on it just to test it out. It's not doing anything. Not even on known cartridge, it's just not doing anything at all. Doesn't even recognize anything's in there. Is strange. Maybe it's my fault for blowing on them. I know you're not meant to do that.
Okay, it is still working. It said there was a, an update. Let's see whether the 101 cart does anything. What? It thinks it's Final Fantasy 4? Official cartridge? What? Okay. That's very broken. And you also can't see it. There you go. So it thinks it thinks that is Final Fantasy 4. Sure. Oh yeah, I have um I do have an official way of glowing cartridges. That's what I've been using recently. It's a lot safer. I'm really curious what's gonna happen now if I launch this because it thinks it's an official Final Fantasy IV game. And I know Final Fantasy IV is on this. And this was a really good test because this should show up as an unknown cartridge. So GB operator, you have failed. Let's see if this actually does anything or what this actually shows up as. Because it should be one of those things. It's just got like a list of a bunch of games. Okay, that's interesting. So if I go on display capture, you can see this box here. So it says integrity check failed. But let's see what it actually comes up as. Hmm. Okay, so it did come up as expected. Like if you're still not happy with that, I do have a third solution, which I've also been using. This contact cleaner, along with some Q-tips. And that really seems to work. Uh, anyway, yeah, this seems just like a... Like it's running as normal. And actually, this is probably a good test. Let's pick something that we know what it looks like normally. What a weird list of games as well. Arkanoid. Everyone knows Arkanoid. Okay, so interesting. So what I remember about this emulator, if I, if I pause, yeah, if I pause here, press L and R, you've got a different... Oh no, this must be the basic one. So there is... Okay, it's doing it. Awesome. So this is a really good example of what that sprite flicker thing does. Yeah, isopropyl is good as well, but I, I ran out, unfortunately. So when this is on flicker, if we go back here, and if I go into the settings, put on display capture again so you can see it. If I... Go, I'm not sure what direction it is, down here. Into frame blending, if I put that on disabled, can you see how everything's jumping up and down? Maybe it's better to show it on that screen. See how everything's wavy like that. That's kind of how it works on the actual original Game Boy itself. And that kind of fills in the blanks because of the way the screen's a bit squished compared to the NES. So you can see how it's kind of flickering and jumping. But if you go into the settings, uh, you need to pause. And change that. Where's the option gone? There's a few different ones. So there's simple, which I think just cuts out every other, every other row or something. Let's put back on display capture so you can kind of see what I'm explaining here. Oh, that's going to be a bit weird to look at. Can I make it fit both on the screen at once? Close enough, I guess. I'll do it like that. So if we go on here, there's simple, which has got rid of the flickering. So for those of you that weren't here a second ago, that's what it looks like normally. So that's what it does look like on the GBA, but the way the screen works on the GBA, it kind of blurs it together. But you've also got a load of different options here. So simple, I think, just eliminates the flicker altogether. But you might be missing some of the detail. 
smart should only affect the sprites that are actually flickering, which I guess in this case is everything, so you won't really notice much difference. LCD ghost in accurate. You should see a little bit of flicker, but not much. So this is kind of how it looks on the GBA itself. So you can kind of make up for that loss in resolution by having two different lines flicker between each other, which was a clever workaround, I guess. And the other option is LCD ghost in fast. So let's try that one. Okay, that's very blurry. But it's great that there's some options to eliminate the flicker altogether. I don't really know why you'd have it on anything other than smart, because it seems like it would just fix it for everything. But I guess if you want the authentic experience, the option is there. Anyway, let's put that back on. Yeah, so there you go. It should look a lot nicer now. It's really horrible when you play it on a, one of the new backlit GBAs as well. Anyway, that's enough of that's enough of that whole collection. Let's take that out. I couldn't find F0 maximum velocity, which I was hoping to, but I did find GP Legend, so let's give that a go. And we can test out the flicker, the way it's actually meant to be used on the GBA, which is in very small, very specific scenarios. So let's see. And while it's loading, uh, I'll have a route round and see whether I can find it or not. I'll be curious to see what comes up with this. So this is like one of those NES emulator things as well, but it's only got one game on. So I'll be interested to see what it thinks that is, if anything. Oh, there's, there's maximum velocity. Hold on, bear with me. I'm swapping the cartridge around. Oh yeah, I need to do that again. Okay, let's try this. How's everyone else doing, by the way? What have you been playing recently? Has anyone um, been playing the new Pokemon games? Right, here we go, F0 Maximum Velocity. Has this got a save file on? Yes. And it's got the other cars too, awesome. Anyway, I just wanted to try playing Pokemon Yellow. Awesome. I wanted to try out the flicker on this game because I know the... Uh... Oh, fantastic, it worked. Yes, that looks brilliant too. So, I'll ex Hold on, let me pause this. I'll explain. I'll explain why I was just like, whoa! Because a lot of you probably won't realise what's so good about that. So, if I turn this off, see how the map's really badly flickering and the shadows and stuff are as well. Um, well, on the original GBA, you wouldn't notice that because the the way the screen refreshes is different. I love Maximum Velocity as well. It's possibly my favourite F-Zero game. I, a lot of people don't really like it that much, but I think it was a massive improvement over this NES game. Especially when you're playing on Master difficulties. It is a lot of fun. Once you've mastered the controls. I've still got it as well. I played this so much, I got like all the best lap times and time trials and 100% completed it back in the day. I was kind of disappointed that the other GBA F-Zero games dumped the difficulty down a bit. Let's see if we can catch him up. Ah, out of the way! Weird yellow taxi thing. I'm not going to be able to catch him up now. Anyway, what I was trying to say, I'll, I'll pause again now so you can see. 
Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the other two, but I absolutely love the first one. So, into frame blending, if we put it on smart. Let's see what Simple does, actually. Simple did do it as well, so I'm not really sure what the difference is between them two. But I think Smart will just be a bit better about making the transparencies. Right, let's carry on. Ah. Let's try and push past these guys. Oh my god, he stopped me on my tracks. I forgot there's bombs on the tracks too. You didn't like the F-Zero GBA games. Not, not even Maximum Velocity. Boost. I'm going to die before I get to the end. Oh, come on. I just love this game. It's just... It's just exhilarating. Come on. Third place. At least I managed to get through it. Um, yeah, I think on the... If you've got F-Zero, try it on the IPS screen, because I think it will... It will show the flicker, you won't be able to see. You won't be able to see the transparency like you're meant to. Which is a real shame, because it does kind of ruin some games by having the better screens. It's a shame they can't really implement something in software like this, so that you still get the really nice, crisp graphics and the better um, transparency effect. You can only really have one or the other. And with the IPS mods as well, there's some Game Boy games that just... I love this music as well. I was obsessed with this track as a kid. I would just pause the game just to hear this. But yeah, there's some Game Boy games that break completely because the... Um, the games were built with the old... Um, really low refresh rate screens in mind. Oh yeah, the main thing that you want to focus on with these older F-Zero games is using the L and R buttons to get around the corners better and tapping the, the brake to turn sharper. It's a really intricate system, but it works really well. And letting go of the accelerator to float around the corners too. It just feels really good once you get, once you get the hang of it. I was worried I was going to crash into them then when, in that cross section. Like there, if you hear that, dun, 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 that's because I'm mashing the accelerator to turn the corner sharper. And the game actually kind of teaches you that. If you watch the ghost races. Because you can see their controls on the screen. Well, they kind of ruined it with the second and third game for the GBA. They changed the controls. Oh, you guys just don't get an advert. So I tried to disable them, but it said it was going to run them anyway, so I don't really know what to do about that. Thanks a lot, Twitch. I would stream on YouTube instead, but I'm worried about it messing my channel up. Although I did notice they finally separated out shorts and live videos from the main, the main video library, which is good. It's a step in the right direction. But I know people don't really go to YouTube to watch live stuff. Ah, uh, no. Second, not bad. Oh, you just got ads as well, damn it. Um, AGS 101, I think. I think you can see the flicker, but not too bad. No, I'm sorry about the ads, guys. There wasn't really anything I could do about it. What a weird name, Sinobaz. I didn't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the names of any of these later tracks. I haven't played these tracks in ages. I usually start at the beginning of the game, so this is kind of fun remembering these old circuits. Yeah, I really love the music in F-Zero Maximum Velocity. I like the story mode in GP Legends, but the main Grand Prix 
is much better on this one. Oh yes, the music! Every song in this game is just a banger. 10 out of 10. And it doesn't get the love it deserves because people just think of this one as a, a weird spin-off because none of the um, cars are from the other F-Zero games. Let's see if we can save a boost up and use two on the next lap. Looks like I'm gaining on these guys. Take the inside line. Oh, the red one came through there and pushed me out of the way. Oh my god, I'm being overlapped by one of the unlockable cars. That's not a good sign. Okay, I'm using the boost. This is a really long track. There's the health regen section. Not quite enough to get back up to full health. Uh, yeah, I've got a climax. I like it for the creation feature, but I don't like the game as much as this one, on the whole. I got it in Japan before it before it went crazy expensive. The prices of it today are just ridiculous. I mean, I can see why, because it's like the last ever F-Zero game. I don't want to say the last ever, because that makes me sad, but you know what I mean. Oh my god, I'm not going to do this. I do have two boosts though, let's see whether I can get back. I can I claw my way back? Sometimes it's good to bounce off the wall to your advantage like that. Okay, let's use the other boost. Let's see if we can get on these two! Ah, oh, I can't turn sharp enough. Doing well though. It feels so weird playing this on an Xbox controller as well. Oh, that was close! I'm doing pretty well. Now stay on this side. Get my power up back. And see how long I can hang on to third place, I guess. No! Not if that happens! Oh, he crashed as well. Yes! Okay. Yes, do that again! No! Why did he bounce into me? Okay, I'm gonna use it. Ah, get out of the way! That was a nice pass between them. Oh, I've got a bit in the mud then, slowed me down slightly. No! Ah, oh, third. <laughs> Why did that take me so long to figure out what you were trying to say then? I can't fix the retro, it's just part of who I am, isn't it? Right. Anyway, let's play another game. I've shown off my F-Zero skills enough now. Let's see. Let's see what this does. I was really curious to see what happens with this. So this is a fake Game Boy Advance game that actually just has the NES version of Mario 3. Yeah, see you, and good luck with your game. Okay, this this is a really interesting case. So obviously this is an unofficial game, but it's actually showing as an official cartridge. So I don't really understand how that can be, but let's see what happens when we launch it. I also don't know how it can say official cartridge, but not have a title. Okay, interesting. So if we put the display capture on. All it said now was, fail to load game, unable to launch the game, please make sure the cartridge is clean. Compared to the other one, which thought it was a different game, but it wasn't. Let's try it again. Now it says unrecognized cartridge. Failed to launch game. Yeah, it looks like this one just won't load at all. So that's kind of interesting. How am I going to keep track of all this for the video? That one didn't load at all. Um, let's put in a game that we obviously know is fake. So let's put in this really awful Pirates of the Caribbean. Unrecognized cartridge, read only cartridge. Fail to load. Don't tell Starlack I blew on the cartridge. Uh, okay, now I'm even more confused. Now it says it is official. There's no way in hell that that's official. Look at it. His face is like stretched to fill the whole of the front of the cart. Let's see what happens.
Right, it is loading. Give it a second. Um, actually. Have I got a tri wing screwdriver here? Yes. I do have one, so I can open up some cartridges and do some comparisons. So, this one is the Metal Slug game, which I already knew was fake. And it's interesting, though. Because, let me go on full screen cam for a second so you can see. So, this is the inside of Metal Slug, which is a fake cartridge, and the uh, <laughs> the chip just fell out there. But, there you go. See what, tell me what you can see on that that makes it a fake. If you can see that, okay. And that's that's the back of it. And I'll open up an official one just to compare it. So let's open Corwin because I've got it here. I don't want to mix these PCBs up. So let's open this. This is an official game. That's a bad fake. Oh dear. I'm dropping things everywhere. So this is what an official game looks like. Let's take that out as well so I don't drop it again. So this is the official PCB for Kuru Kuru Kuruin. And, oh yeah, wow, you can really tell the difference now. And that is the fake for Metal Slug. So There you go. Anything with a black blob, blob is automatically bad. It's interesting that they spelt Nintendo right, though, because on some of the fakes that I've seen, um, one of the ways you can tell is by looking at the Nintendo logo. Um, let's have a look at Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, then, because for a long time I was convinced that this one was actually an official cartridge. But this is the fake one. Okay, I see what you mean. Instantly bad. There it is. The black blob in the middle. So what is that black blob actually replacing from an official game then? There's an official one for comparison. If I can angle it right. Now I'll be really interested to open up one of the completely fake ones. Let's open up this one. 101 in one. We're going to have to keep all these safe now. Yeah, I don't understand that either. How can they go so wrong with the labels? Like, the label for Amazing Mirror looks legit. But the actual PCB inside is fake. Whereas, yeah, the, the label for Pirates of the Caribbean. Look at that. Amazing. Okay, interesting. So that is what the hundred and something in one NES cart looks like inside. The punch number in the corner is too small on Kirby. So I do have an official Kirby there as well to compare it. Not the same one, but hopefully it can focus enough. Yeah, so you can see on the official one on the top, you can see that I think it's 22. On the bottom, it's got a really tiny little 37 indented in there. But apart from that, there's not really much to differentiate them. The seal of quality is a slightly different shade, like it's lighter on the top one. But that's been interesting. Now I'm going to put all these half taken apart cartridges in this drawer here so I don't lose them. And what shall we play next? Let's go back to the Game Boy. Let's put it back on the screen. And let's close that off. What should we play? What should we play? We've got some 
Got some homebrew stuff here. Let's see what this game does. So this is Mona and the Witch's Hat, a Game Boy homebrew game. Okay, interesting. It's stuck on Pirates of the Caribbean, thinking it's an official cartridge. Another really weird thing. So now, here's another thing for me to write about in the video. We've got a flashing orange light, and if I take the cart in and out, it's not actually affecting the window at all. So let's close that and open it back up again. It's still flashing orange. I don't know what I've done here. Let's unplug it. I hope I haven't broken anything by playing too many fakes. Dun, 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 dun. Did you guys hear that? Let's load that back up. And let's try putting that in. Weird. So again, it's getting confused. It thinks it thinks that this homebrew is an official cartridge. But it's also saying that it's read-only. And both of those are wrong, I believe. I'll be back in a second. I'm going to go and turn the heater off and open the window because it's getting really hot in here. There we go, before I start sweating. Uh, right, where was I? Let's see what happens when we launch this. Integrity check failed. Well, we've got the game. We've got sound. It's a pretty fun game, too. Hair is getting messy. There's really not much to do in this game, though. The whole thing's over in a few seconds. I'm on the GBA mode as well. Let's put that on Game Boy so you can see it properly. But yeah, this will be a great way of. Maybe have been a little bit loud. This will be a great way of recording homebrew games for future videos. I wonder if I'll be able to play all the way through this. It's literally only a few minutes long. The way you fire those stars kind of reminds me of Wendy for the Game Boy Color, if any of you guys have played that. Oh, okay, you're not meant to touch that. Whoops. You have 121 photos of GBA PCBs. And okay, out of those 121, how many are how many are legit and how many are fake? Oh, you're lucky finding Wendy for cheap, but it's a fairly pricey game these days. Okay, they're all just your legit games. Are you trying to get photos of them for like a catalogue or something so you know what you've got? Or just for fun? I won't judge you. <laughs> I think the water can kill me, so I need to go up there. Oh, I can't get up there. Okay, so you started off by taking a picture of a fake game and then you took pictures of all your official ones. Now we get a little shoot up section. A really basic shoot up section. We 
you really don't need to do much to get through this. I'm going to keep playing though, because I think this is like the last level. Yeah, I don't understand why it's so short. That's it, it just stops. Imagine spending like 20 quid on that, not knowing that the whole game's like one minute long. Very disappointing. It's it's nice, I like the game, but man, they could have done so much more with it. Like the as it's as it stands, it's it's just a bit of a pointless physical release, I guess. It's more of a proof of concept than an actual game. I think so anyway. I'm not being Oh there we go, we've got an interesting game here. I was seeing what I'd pulled out earlier. And it is official. Nemesis. Let's play a bit of Nemesis. Okay, so you took a picture of an official one to compare it. To get your refund. And then since then you've just took pictures of all of them. Fair enough. Have you got them all like, stored nicely somewhere to refer back to? Okay, I think I've changed the buttons around now so they're the right way around. I always find it kind of weird that on this one you can... Um, Not sure what I've done. For some reason, uh, a grid has come up on the computer. Can you all still hear and see me? Not sure what happened then. The controller stopped working. Hang on, let me close out of it. I think I accidentally opened Steam and the controller connected to that instead. Yeah, there's a load of fakes on eBay. You need to be really careful. Have you got any other... There we go, it's working now. Have you got any other tips for people? Oh my god, I forgot how bad the frame rate is on this. Oof. I knew there was... There was one good... Uh, Konami shooter on the Game Boy, but... Oh, this isn't it. Is it Parodius that's good on the Game Boy? Yeah, I always ask for pictures of inside the car. It's sad that even at shows you can't always guarantee that the games are going to be official. Because... That Metal Slug game that I showed off earlier... That was sold as an official game, and it wasn't. They're just so easy to make copies of. The frame rate on this is so bad. Oh my god. That's enough of that. That's painful. I'm sure I remembered that being a lot better than it was. Let's see what else we've got here. Okay. Here's a good game. And a good test as well. Is it going to recognise it? Okay, yes. So, apparently there is some sort of... I haven't bought a game on eBay since about 2016. Anyone know if trickery has increased on there since? I don't know actually. I uh, because I've started going to loads of different gaming events instead. I haven't really bought that much on eBay compared to what I used to either. But I presume it's just as bad as it always was. Hmm. Oh, awesome. So this is what I was hoping would happen. It does have Super Game Boy support. Nemesis and Castlevania had a bad journey on the Game Boy, yeah. A rusty contact. I don't know what you can do for that. As I was showing earlier, I've got this. Someone on Twitter recommended it to me. Hold on, let me pause that. I've got this, which might help. I don't know if it would be able to fix rust, though. It's called Deoxit Gold. Someone on Twitter recommended it for cleaning contacts. So it might be worth a try. 
yeah try and get that I mean, it was quite expensive for a little tube but you probably don't have to use that much i love this game though it's so good look at these amazing movement options you've got compared to the arcade game it's so much fun just to, like bounce around do backflips side flips all sorts of stuff swing off ropes and things Has anyone else played this Donkey Kong DK94 as it's known? Oh, the uh, buttons have changed again. You, you kind of saw there, what, what you can do is... Um, you can throw the hammer in the air. The oxy should help with the rest. That's good. Yeah, such a such a good game. Um, I'm gonna try and rebind the controls again because they messed up. That's better. Yeah, whatever just happened with Steam launch and messed up the Xbox controller. I'm not gonna try and get that. Uh, I always used to be terrified of that in the arcade game. That's good. At least there are some options for getting rid of rust. It's not permanent, permanent damage to the contacts. Oh yeah, it's definitely. This is definitely one of the best games on the original Game Boy. Ah no. It's pretty cool having headphones on and hearing this in stereo as well. Because usually when you're playing on the Game Boy, you can only hear it in mono. But yeah, just look how good the um, the movement options are in this game. Compared to the arcade game, it's like a night and day difference. There we go. And it just gets so much more interesting as the game goes on. Like, in the arcade, this would be it. Game over. But... Keep watching. I'm gonna head off to Proto New Donk City now. Yeah, less game over and more. Let's do this again with a few more barrels. But yeah, this just expands it into a whole, like, bigger game now with loads of different worlds and... When you play it on the SNES or on an emulator like this with the Super Game Boy borders and stuff, you also get colour, which is really cool. Well, kind of different shades, but you get the idea. I just love all the different movement options like that, doing the double jump. Throw the hammer in the air. And yeah, if you fall, it doesn't really matter that much. And if you do a handstand like that and then jump again as you reach the floor, then you can sort of jump even higher on the second bounce and stuff, and you've got a, a sideward jump and things. Using an expendable contact connector accessory. Okay, so is that just like something that goes in between the original contacts and the cartridge? That's interesting. Here's another thing I, I really like in terms of movement. These ropes here, so if you keep pressing up, Mario will start spinning around faster and faster. And then eventually you'll go so fast, you can fly off like that. I like how that oil actually says oil on it. That's a bit weird. Are there any other games that anyone wants to see me try on this? Else I'll just go through what I picked out earlier to put on the table. Is 
Is this the origin of Mario's triple jump? Maybe. It's not really a triple jump, it's more of a handstand into a jump. I don't think it has a proper triple jump. I do wish that they brought back these, like, different movements that you can do, though. Let's throw him out of the way. We can try. No, there isn't a triple jump, but you can do that. Which I guess is kind of a triple jump, so yeah, maybe. In a weird way. And you do have his side jump from Mario 64 as well. So, yeah, in a way, a lot of Mario's modern movement options came from this game. And it feels so good for an original Game Boy game as well. Looking through backloggery. What have you seen on there? That I forget to update what games I'm playing all the time. I think I put Pokemon on there the other day, so I did that at least. Yeah, the whatever, run to one side and then backflip the other way again. Something that was really useful in Mario 64. trying to look for Tetris Plus earlier because I really love playing that, but I couldn't find it. Let's see, what have we got here? I do have Castlevania 2, as we were talking about that earlier. Oh uh, yeah, Pokemon Pinball, I wanted to try that. Hmm, bear with me a second. I'll put you on full screen so you can see me rooting around back there so you can kind of make it out in that tray there there's some game boy color games i'll go and see if i can find any move that out of the way a little bit Jackpot! I found all three of the things I was looking for. So, got Pokemon Pinball. There's no battery in there, but I guess that doesn't really matter because it will come through the controller. I also got the Game Boy Camera, which you can apparently use... Oh yeah, I need to re-angle that again. So, let's see what the Game Boy Camera does first. Let's put these back on. It feels weird talking without headphones on. So. This should be really cool, so. There you go. There's a Game Boy camera in there. It looks a little bit top heavy, but it's still standing up. But what you can do is. Hold on, let me put it on display capture so you can see it properly. Right, there you go. So up here, there's a Photos tab. And you can't see because it's off the bottom of the screen. Mm, maybe if I do that. Hey, cool. There we go. So this is what was already on my Game Boy camera. There's a load of really old pictures. Save all. Okay. So let's... Make a new folder. I'm going to put it on the game capture section. So let's save them in there. 
and it's a shame there's no date because I know some of these are dating back quite a bit. There's a weird Sonic that I drew. See if we can zoom in on it a bit. There you go. That's how you get pictures out of the Game Boy camera onto the computer. That's awesome. There's me looking a bit crazy. It's like a YouTuber thumbnail face. There's my sister with a really old phone. That's kind of dating the pictures a bit. I've got another Game Boy camera somewhere with uh, with some older pictures. There's a recent picture that was on one of my previous live streams. Not that you can make out what anyone's saying on it. There we go. Cheese. I don't know whether you can actually take pictures with it though. Let's try. Mm, the launch button's actually greyed out, so maybe not. I guess it wouldn't do anything because it's not technically running in real time. So no, you can't actually launch the Game Boy camera, but you can get the pictures off the Game Boy camera. So, kind of. Do you guys want to get a picture? If you're watching, say cheese in the chat. I'll boot the Game Boy camera up on here and try and get a photo of it for the video. If it will load up on here. Now it load. Yes. Say cheese, everyone. I'm going to take a picture of it using the analog pocket. And then we can see whether we can... Whether we can actually load it up on here. So... Uh, how do I make it bigger? Whoa, double vision, triple vision. Oh, it's so awkward to use. It's so slow. Maybe turn the brightness down a bit. Contrast up. Okay, can just about make out the word cheese. <laughs> That's as close. That's as close as I could do. It'll do. Let's get rid of display capture before you you, uh, you won't get a headache looking at that. So now we've done that, if we save this, and the cool thing about the Game Boy camera is well, you can spin it around and get a selfie. So let's do that as well. An up-to-date selfie. Oh my god, look how bad it is. You probably can't see much on there. Can't see anything. There we go. We've got a selfie in front of the camera too. So let's save those two. And quit that and then put the cartridge back in here. And see how fast it is for those new pictures to appear. Let's see whether it's instant. Should be. So photos. I'll go back on display capture. So you can see them. It's, okay, this is kind of weird, so it doesn't really seem like there's a way of actually clicking on the pictures from here. It just says that there's this many pictures found on the camera. And it looks like you need to save all of them. So let's do that again. Okay. Looks like it overwrote everything as well, so these are all the ones that it's just generated now. I think so this should be the new this should be the new one yeah there you go in all the 100 pixels glory Starlack saying cheese right there and parasocial i think saying cheese there it's so blurry i can't even make the name out but it worked it did work there's a selfie and there's the game boy camera itself so yeah, pretty cool. There's a slightly better selfie than I took the other day because I was playing around with it. So that's cool. It's a shame you can't actually launch it to play some of the mini games on there. The cheese emoji went through. Let me see whether I can make it out. Wait, did it save it somewhere else? It's not on that one. 
Did it go on desktop? Oh, okay. I saved it somewhere else accidentally. Yes, there it is. All two pixels of Game Boy cheese. That's pretty fun, though. And I know some uh, Instagram pages actually do use the Game Boy camera, and they take some really, really interesting shots with it, too. So I'm sure this will come in handy for them. As an easy way of exporting from it. Anyway, I did have some fun games here as well, so let's, I don't know where it is now, I did have Castlevania 2. Oh yeah, Pokemon Pinball, let's try that, see whether we've got the rumble in the cartridge or not. So, let me just check the settings first, because there are options for rumble here. Oh yeah, you've also got different coloured palettes as well to choose for the original Game Boy. So you've got all of the different Super Game Boy options. So that line of options across the bottom there, you've got all of those. So 1A, 1B, 1C. You've got all of the options on the Game Boy Advance where you hold a button and press a direction. So you've got all of them. You've got options for the DMG, Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Light, or just a plain grayscale as well, which is really cool. Um, hardware preset palettes, you can, you can choose like, what presets you want, whether you want to use Super Game Boy borders or not, uh, color correction, I'll put that on auto I guess, because this is going to load up a Game Boy Color game, but down here, Gamepad Rumble enabled, Game Boy Player Rumble enabled, so if I save, and then launch, fingers crossed, I should be able to get Rumble. And now if I turn that one off. Okay. If this controller actually has one, but I'm not really sure though. It might just be... One of those cheaper... Oh wow, it does! It's really good as well. There's no way of showing that off on camera, but I can feel it. Just, you know, just have to imagine. But that's really cool. I'm, re I'm really happy about that, actually. Let me just angle the camera a bit so it's back in the middle. That's awesome. Um, do you guys know of any Game Boy Advance games that had Rumble for the Game Boy player that I can try out? Yay. It's been a long time since I played this, I don't really remember what you're supposed to aim for on the table. The music's so good though. And I'm amazed at how well the rumble works on it as well. That's really cool. I'm glad I tried that now. Mario and Luigi Superstar. Yes. Does it rumble like when you get hit and stuff, or is it only at certain points in the game? I'm not sure where it is. I do have John Dozer though. Mario 3 does as well. Have I got Mario 3 here? I've got Mario 2. Mario World. I really need to organise my GBA games. For some reason, in the top of this box, I have two copies of Simpsons Road Rage. Back to back. Are they both official? They do look slightly different, actually. Should we do a test to find out whether these are official or not? So here goes the first one. Official cartridge, apparently. And unrecognized. Or is it just because it's dirty?
Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the GameCube, the GameCube Game Boy player didn't have the palettes that the Super Game Boy did, which is weird. And this is weird too. One of the copies is working fine, but the other one is just constantly showing up as unrecognized. So, Starlack, if you're still there. So, the one on the left, this one, isn't showing up. Are they both legit? Or is the one on is this one fake? If you can tell from that. I don't know whether you can make out any of the letters on there or not. Looks like that one's got one letter on it and that one's got two. Yeah, they both look good. That one's a bit more faded though. I'm kind of confused why it's not recognizing it yeah that one's not being recognized at all i think it is it is legit though just i think it's a bit sun damaged uh, you can you know you can't really see inside but they're both legit weird yeah i'm not really sure why that would be then Let's see. Oh, there was something else I wanted to try. This is something that I've never been able to get working on any Game Boy. This smart com thing here. I kind of destroyed the label trying to get it open because for whatever stupid reason they put the screw right in the center of the cartridge. I don't know why they would do that and I thought it was in the corner and there's no screw on the back at all. But the really weird thing about this is that it actually only works in certain versions of the official consoles too. So I don't know whether this will actually recognize it at all. No, it doesn't. Doesn't seem like... Oh, okay, we had something for a second. Hmm. They didn't stop me. Well, they did because I damaged it. And it was very expensive too, and I felt really bad. Right, unknown title, official cartridge. That is definitely wrong, because there is no way that the Smartcom was official. And it says, integrity check failed, would you like to run anyway? And then it flickered white for a second, and now it's gone back to saying, please insert cartridge. Failed to load game. Launch, yes, start anyway. Okay, that's really, really strange. Okay, I've got it to stay. No. I wonder what would happen if I try and download that. Yeah, it's not even letting me click on the data screen. It's just bouncing. Okay, now it's doing it. So if I go back on display capture, you can kind of see what's going on here. It just keeps flickering on and off. So when you go to download game, let's just put it on desktop. So let's see if that will actually do anything. No, it keeps resetting. Yeah, I don't know where it's getting the information for that official cartridge thing because it's clearly not working properly. Yeah, that's that's just freaking it out. I better stop doing that in case I break something. Uh, right, let's try drill dozer because I know this has a rumble feature. Have I broken it? Is it just going to keep looping me? Do I need to switch it on and off again? Uh, no, it seems okay. Let's try launching this. See whether the controller can do built-in GBA rumble as well. Because it only mentioned Game Boy Player rumble for the GBA games. So this will be an interesting test when this loads. I've got a lot to write up after this in terms of the video that I want to make for it. Okay, is Game Boy Player compatible as well? Cool.
Yes, I can feel it already. That's so cool. And let's try the fast forward button, see if we can fast forward through this cutscene. Uh, we have lost sound again though, so I wonder whether the sound will come back or not. Oh, interesting. Okay. That was something I didn't even think about testing, but if you're in fast forward, it still rumbles. Probably can't hear it. But wait until we get the drill, then you can... I can test the rumble out, just put it against the wall or something. Blah, 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 blah. I know. Yeah, so it is rumbling, as it should be, but when we go back to play it in normal speed, we have lost, um, we've lost sound again by fast forwarding it. So that might be a bug with the software more than anything. Oh yeah, the DS rumble pack works in the analog pocket now, doesn't it? That's cool. Right, anyway, I can't really get that far in this game because it's all in Japanese. And I think I might need to close the software and open it again just to refresh it. Now the sound's gone. So. Let's just play another regular game that I've got here. So. For a minute. Castlevania 2, as we mentioned that one earlier. Although. Put display capture back on. I did just get this error message. Integrity check failed. We're unable to confirm the integrity of this cartridge. Would you like to proceed? The game may not play or save properly. Try cleaning and reinserting it. So it didn't come up with an error that time. Maybe it's... It is glitching a little bit though. Can you see that? I don't know whether that's the cartridge thing being a bit glitchy or whether the cartridge isn't clean. Not sure. Just to be safe, I'll disconnect it and connect it back again and try it. Yeah, much better than Castlevania 1, that's for sure. Okay, let's try again. I have inserted a cartridge. It does seem a little bit temperamental. Let's try a game we've already played. Let's put Donkey Kong back in, see whether it's the cart. Okay, that loaded up fine. Let's try that again. Maybe it's the cartridge? I'll go and get some Q-tips and use the proper contact cleaner. Never mind. Uh, never mind, I can't find him. Yeah, I thought they were in the bathroom, but they're not there. It is not liking that cartridge. Let's try the old-fashioned method. Okay. Let's try the NES method then. That worked. 
I just shifted it to the side slightly. So let's see what happens if we click on download game and download the ROM. And then, okay, so it downloaded fine. It just didn't like being completely pushed all the way in for some reason. So now we've got this game up and running. Yeah, and we've got sound, good. Now we've got this up and running, I wanted to try out some of the different palette options. And you guys can enjoy this incredible music. This game's amazing. After the very slow walk. Oh, listen to this, so good. I hate this third. Yes, go the first time. Right. Anyway, let's check out. Let's check out all the different palette options. The nest method is literally so the cartridge is in like that. Just tilt it to the side a little bit so you can feel the pins push against the system. That's literally all it is. Right, anyway, let's have a look and see what options we've got for the palette. So, grayscale. There we go. That, that looks quite nice, actually. Yeah, I've got the... That's something else we can try in a bit, actually, is see whether it uh, EverDrive works on this. I was going to say I've got the ROM hack on my EverDrive. It's really cool hearing this game in stereo as well. I'm enjoying playing these with the headphones on. Okay. Save me trying to climb up that rope. Let's try the next color palette. Which is GB Pocket. It is a bit annoying. Let me swap back to display capture. It's a bit annoying that it starts down here and you have to scroll back up to this section to change a palette every time, and then go back down to press save, and when you press save, the menu disappears. Oh. There we go, if I do it like that. This is what the Game Boy Pocket palette looks like. I don't know, I could happily jam out to this music. Although, if you do find it too shrill, there is another option in here, which I haven't really tried yet. Audio filter. So it's already on 20% by default. If you disable it. That's what it sounds like off, completely. Um... But let's enable that and maybe put it at 50%. See what the difference makes. There you go. Can you tell the difference over the stream? Let's put it on 100 so you can really tell. Or 95. Whoa. Okay, now it sounds like I'm underwater or something. Yeah, I think it... Well, it's doing a pass of the higher frequencies. It's getting rid of them. So it says, specifies the cutoff frequency of the low-pass audio filter. A higher value increases the perceived strength of the filter since the wider range of the high-frequency spectrum is attenuated. So let's put it on that again, which I think was 20%. Let's try a few of the other... Palette options. GB Light. I'm guessing that's bright blue. Yes. I always found the GB Light to be a bit overbearing. But it's cool what the options are. And it does actually look quite true to the real system. Which is interesting. Oh, I love this soundtrack. I'll get Mega Man 5 out as well. That's got an amazing soundtrack too. Completely unique for the Game Boy as well. Yeah, should we try 30%? Let's 
Apparently it makes more of a difference on GBA games, because they have that, like, weird background hiss sometimes. Oh no! Let's try it on 30%. It sounds slightly muffled, but not too bad. Maybe I'll keep it on 15. <clears throat> Let's try some other palettes. I won't go through all of them. But this is one that I used to really enjoy. I used to play all my Game Boy games with this. Kind of orangey-brown colour. Does anyone watching have a favourite Game Boy colour, or Game Boy black and white colour palette that you use? Or is there any that you'd like me to use for my videos to, you know, keep it the same every time? Because I haven't really thought about that sort of continuity between videos before. Oh my god, I did it again. Original pea green. Oh yeah, DMG green. There you go. That's how it should look. Let's see what else is on here. I won't bother going through all of them. I wonder what GBC grey... I wonder what the difference between that and... Grayscale is. Let's see if that makes any difference at all. No. They're identical. Yeah, the CPU, CPU one is like old man style. GBC Dark Blue. Oh yeah, that's a classic. This is like the default one, isn't it? When you boot the games up on the Game Boy Color. I quite like this as well because it separates the sprites from the background. But obviously it's quite garish. But it definitely helps. It actually makes some games a lot easier. Oh my god, I actually made it to the end. <laughs> oh my god, the game's trolling me. No. I can't believe that happened. I've never spent so long on that level before. Oh no, not adverts. What are you saying? Up and B. Dark brown up and be. Oh yeah, that one looks nice. And you still get the separation. Yes, this might be my favourite now. This looks really good. Why does he look naked? <laughs> Look at him there, he, look, he looks naked. I think so, anyway. Let's try some other colours. I'm doing better this time. No, oh, I lost the coin. Yeah, you know what, Gian? I might stick with this up and B one. This looks really good. Let's see if I can actually make it to the end of the stage this time. Did adverts come up for anyone else? Oh, you're back. Hopefully the adverts weren't too painful. Yeah, it does kind of make some areas feel a bit cheap, knowing what things are sprites and what things are backgrounds. No ads this time. That's good. 
Right, now I've got a little bit further, let's try another pallet. What's another good one? Reverse, is that the... Whoa, okay. That's a bit over the top. I'm not sure what to think about that one. Just lost my health to gain my health back. Oh yeah, I forgot you can slide down the rope like that. Right. I don't really need to pause, nothing's going to hurt me there. Let's just get rid of that pallet. We've also got all the Super Game Boy ones as well, so... I can't really remember what they all are. The Super Game Boy ones don't differentiate the sprites from the background, I don't think, so... Maybe these ones are a bit better? They actually just change the colours themselves rather than the sprites. Which I always thought was really cool. That one's a bit too bright. There's loads to, to go through. Whoa, that one's painful to look at as well. That one's not too bad. I feel like that one was used in a lot of Game Boy Color adverts. Let's see what the last one is, 4H. Basic pea green. Slightly different pea green to the default one. Anyway, I think I'm going to stick with Gion's suggestion of the dark brown up and B. I think that's the best one. Hmm. Right, what else do I want to try? Let's see how it handles 3D Game Boy Advance games. I know V-Rally is a pretty good showcase for 3D on the GBA. So that might be an interesting one to try. And then... I guess we can try out the solar sensor on Boktai as well. This game's really impressive. If you haven't seen V-Rally for the GBA before... I don't know... Oh, create game? Okay. I don't know who Hero is. Let's just start fresh. Your collection's whole focus. Wow. You can probably already see how impressive this is. What other good 3D GBA games do you have then? Yeah, 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 whatever. I just want to race. There's some weird, weird music. I've got Sega Rally here as well. That's another good 3D rally game. Oh my god, look at this. It looks like a PS1 game. Very, very impressive. And you've got the in-car view as well. The only downside is the floating hands. But, yeah. Super impressive overall. I remember at the time I was impressed by games that had sort of Little bits of 3D, like the Crash Bandicoot game with the into the screen. Yeah, Sega Rally's going up in price, I've seen recently. I don't know if V Rally's expensive or not, though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, VR. I'm not very good at V Rally, as you can tell. Oh yeah, I want to try the Everdrive as well, see whether that works on here or not. This game's cheap. I'm surprised this game's so cheap, considering so many people sing its praises about the, the 3D graphics. 
considering this looks a lot better than Sega Rally, you'd think that this would be the more expensive game. Oh yeah, Sega Rally 2 on Dreamcast is great. Not quite as good as the Saturn one though, I don't think. It didn't seem quite as smooth. I know why, it's because they were running it through Windows CE, which was a massive mistake. But it's still a fun game. The controls are great. Hey, I'm actually not doing too bad. It sold really well at the time. What, this did or Sega Rally? You know what, in some ways I actually prefer how this GBA version of V-Rally 3 feels compared to the GameCube one. V-Rally sold well. Yeah, it was quite popular at the time. Let's do one more Two, race. One, go. Yeah, I'm, I swear the controls on this are actually better than the console game. This actually feels kind of close to Sega Rally, the original, in terms of how the steering feels. Oh yeah, I'm not sure whether I've got Driver 3 or not, but I remember, I remember seeing videos on that one. There was also a really impressive Driver style game that never got a release, that was using something called the Blue Roses engine. I did a video on it a few years ago, but it's a shame that nothing really became off the back of that. There was one game, I can't remember what it was called, it was an arcade style racing game. Kind of like cruising, but it wasn't cruising. It was like a, a new IP I think. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about now. But yeah, that was something that used that engine that actually got a final release, but it didn't really look as good as the prototypes they were showing off. Smash and Drive, yeah, that's it. I want to try and get that. I haven't got that one. I know there's already loads of videos out there, but I would love to do a video on 3D GBA games. Or, you know, games that push the hardware to its limits. Like Punch and Wait. I love his... Well, Stop Skeletons from Fighting. I love his videos. And obviously there's that game dev YouTuber... Um, that's been making 3D GBA games. He made his port of Minecraft, which was really impressive. V Rally got 85 and 91%. Wow. I can see why. It was very impressive. Oh cool. If you ever if you ever do release that video, let us know. Right. I've never actually played this one, but I remember picking it up because I've heard that it's got good graphics. Yeah, mini mini me, I think that's how you pronounce it. That was the channel I was thinking of. You wanna look you wanna try and find some games that neither of those have covered. Hmm. Maybe Herbie? Maybe Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. I don't think either of them have mentioned that. Have they? Let's see what other ones I've got in here. Crash Nitro Car. Is that fully 3D? SSX3 and Tricky. I know they're both kind of 3D games. Right, let's see what's so good about this. Because I've had this in my collection for a while now. But I haven't gone through the effort of loading it up yet. Oh wow! That's really smooth. Weird. Is it 3D or is it like mode 7? The cars look... The cars look actual... Are they sprites? 
I legitimately can't tell. The control itself isn't very good. It's very stiff handling. Oh, it looks like someone crashed there. The draw distance isn't too bad either, at least not on the track itself. Yeah, quite interesting. I like how smooth the rotation is for the road. The frame rate's pretty good. Oh, whoa, okay. You can jump? I didn't expect that. That must be what the stars are. They must be power-ups. A mix of Mode 7 and 3D, yeah. But what about the car itself? Is it 3D or is it a sprite? I'm struggling to tell. So yeah, the different stars are different power-ups. I think I just hit him out of the way with that one. That's cool. Oh, um, yeah, sure, if you... Oh, why am I going backwards? What the hell? Okay, that's definitely a pre-rendered sprite. Okay, green is jump. Yellow flips you round into reverse for some for some reason. Yeah, sprites with lots of frames, I think. It looks like the buildings are fully 3D. Really interesting mix, yeah. The buildings are fully polygonal. The opponent's cars might be fully 3D, because you can see them from all different angles. So in this one, the actual stadium seats or the stadium wall is 3D. The track itself is mode 7. The player car is pre-rendered. Really interesting. The backgrounds are flat. Yeah, I'm genuinely really impressed by this, especially how well it runs. Hmm, the cars look pre-rendered. There's a lot of frames then, if they are. But I'm thinking, because of the low resolution of the cars, that they are actually models. Like, even if you're up close, they're not as high resolution as your car. See there. They might be really low-resolution polygons. Oh yeah, it could be. It's a lot more obvious in Mario Kart 64 though. Is this supposed to be the NASCAR track? It's a shame they couldn't do banked sides. Makes this one a bit mindless. You win. Woo. That's so impressive. Look at the animation on that wheel as well. And then you've got stills from the movie too. They really did go all out with all the different themes in this. Sometimes when you turn in, the frame rate does go down a little bit, which is a bit strange. But I'm glad I gave this a go, because I've been curious as to why I picked this up for a long time. I remember reading about it somewhere a few years ago. And then I must have gone on eBay straight away and then forgot why I went on eBay. So one day, Herbie turned up at the door and was like, eh, why did I order this? <laughs> must have been in some... Drunken eBay buying spree. Ah. So anyway, let's finish this race, and then we can take a look at uh, Sega Rally. Yeah, I got it complete in box as well, and I'm sure I only paid like a tenner for it, maybe. Maybe it's good to get it now before it goes up in price. Clearly, after I've shown it off on this stream, the price is going to skyrocket, so be quick, guys. Whoa, flying Kirby. Like the leaf in Mario Kart is SNES. Neither of the GBA ma makes ever viewed it. Okay, that's not where I found out that it's a good game then. Because I've got the PDFs for all those GBA mags on my iPad. 
And I've actually got all of them physically in the garage as well. I would love to do a video about all my magazines one day. Because I was really, really big into gaming magazines before the internet kind of took over and swallowed everything whole. Yeah, I've got hundreds of them. They're all stored away in, um, in drawers in the back of the garage. I will do one day when I've got the space to get them all out and look at them. There are big reasons as to why I know so much about games today is because literally every night before bed I would grab a different magazine from under the bed and read it for like an hour before I went to sleep every single night. Uh, I haven't got many Sega ones. I've got all the official Nintendo magazines though. Uh, right, what was I going to play next? Oh yeah, Sega Rally. So, you'll see what I mean about the graphics not being as good on this. Starlack, have you got a GBX magazine? That was my favourite GBA mag growing up. Multiple instances detected. It's a lie, there are not multiple instances, nothing's open. For some reason, when I pulled the game out, then the program just crashed. And it's saying I can't open it because I've already got it open. Right. Let's end task in the task manager and try again. Yeah. I've still got a... I've got a subscription for Retro Gamer. No, it won't open. Maybe I'll have to end the stream here if I can't get it to load. That's a shame. There's a GBX on eBay with the promo game. Oh, that's cool. How much is it? How much is it going for? I actually finally managed to collect all of those games recently. Why is it not loading? I'll give that a second to load up. Yeah, it looks like it's not loading for some reason. But... Inspired by me. Awesome. Was it that one? I think that one came came on the cover at some point. And I spent ages trying to track these ones down as well. These are the double packs that they advertised in the magazine. So that one's race time and smash out. And that one is full time and hang time. So yeah, really happy to finally have all of them. Yeah, Edge was always really good with reviews. I love the way they do them as well, and they give you alternatives. No, we might have to end the stream here, guys. I can't get the program to open again. Oh, I was enjoying that too. I'll try one more time to close it off. I can see it in the task manager but whenever I go to reopen it it's saying that there's still an instance even though I've closed it let's try again Let's try run as administrator. No, it does not want to open. I'll try and... Okay, we're back. Yes.
Can we see it? We are half back. No, where is Sega Rally? I was panicking then. I thought I would have to end the stream. I'm not ready to go yet. Yeah, I force closed it a few times. It just didn't do anything. And now it is not showing up on Streamlabs either. It is still in beta. It says it's beta 0 0.9. So, yes, it's back. Okay, let's try launching this. You can see what Sega Rally's like. Uh, I might stand up for a second because my neck is aching. I haven't moved all day. I work from home now, so literally been working from this desk. Took the dog for a walk, had some food, and then came straight back here to stream all night. Probably not the best, healthiest decision, but it's fun. Okay. Do we have sound? Yes, we have sound. So. Let's see what the GBA version of Sega Rally's like. Be warned, it's nowhere near as good as uh, V Rally. You can already see how much more blocky it is. The sound's impressive, though. The sound's probably the best thing about this. The, the voxels they used are just so low resolution. It almost feels like, why would they bother? Maybe it doesn't look so bad on the stream, but if you've got it like full screen on, on a TV or something, it looks awful. On the GBA itself, maybe it's okay. But what do you think? Clearly V-Rally is a hundred times better than this. Driver 3 looks impressive. I can't remember if I've got Driver 3 or not. I've got Iridium 3D, which is kind of an impressive 3D game for the system, but it's also not really 3D at the same time. I'm not sure where the Everdrives are. I wanted to try... I wanted to try uh, the Everdrive, see what that looks like, but I can't find it. Yeah, I probably haven't got it then if it's not on Backlog room. I know there's a lot that I haven't added on there yet, but I think I've done all my Game Boy and GBA games. Yeah, I think the main problem with this is the, the amount of different resolutions that are all on the screen at once really throws you off. It does look really inconsistent, like the cars are a lot, be a lot better than the actual track itself. GBX in the game is for 150. Right. Uh, which, which game is it? Is it the Space Invasion one or is it Karate Joe? Or Painter, I think that was the other one. Space Invasion and Karate Joe, two in one. Yeah. I think I've got that one. I don't know why I didn't have it back in the day, because I was subscribed to GBX and I've got all the VHS tapes, but I never got the game. I feel like I could sue them for that. Let's see if I can find it.
There it is. This one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it even says two free games on there. GBX exclusive. And then it's got some adverts on the back for random detail things. Uh, is the cart in there? Yeah, the cart is in there. There you go. I love the little random yellow bits on the top. Weird inside the cart as well. It's just got like folded up cardboard in there. Um, some super, super cheap looking instructions. Have a look how <laughs> have a look how cheap that is. It's literally just a piece of paper that was folded in half. Enjoy Karate Joe. Space Invasion has a lot more instructions than Karate Joe for some reason. Actually, obviously I know the um I know the smart com didn't work, but that never worked anyway. The smart com obviously came from the same range as, as these, but let's see whether this let's see whether this will work on here. Let's go back to the main screen. I think I might have broken the program before because I actually pulled the cartridge out before I'd shut the game down. So let's see what happens if we put one of the action GBX games in there. Anything? No. Nope. Shall I try the nest technique, which is tilt it to the side a bit? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Uh, I don't know where the Q-tips are. I can't try cleaning the pins. Hmm. Don't look. You saw nothing. Let's try that. No, it's not. It's just not seeing the game. At all. Mm. No, why do you keep getting adverts? Yeah, it's not doing anything. I wonder if... Where's the analog pocket gone? I wonder if the analog pocket can play it. No, maybe that explains it. The analog pocket just comes up with an error screen. So if something errors on the pocket, the GB op operator just can't see it at all. No. No use. Let's try another GBA 3D game. Yep, sometimes the original hardware is just still the best way to go. Oh hey, the adverts weren't too long for you this time. That's good. I was just saying that Space Invasion and Karate Joe doesn't work in the analog pocket either. So it might be if a game doesn't work on there, it won't work on the GB operator. So if you try and play it on here... It's kind of weird, because it knows what the game is. You can see that it says it's called Space Invasion and Karate Joe. But whenever you actually go to boot it up, you're just greeted with that error screen. And if I try and put the cartridge in here, it doesn't even recognise it at all. It doesn't even say that there's a cartridge inserted. So, not really sure what's going on with that. But... Here's another interesting 3D game for the GBA that not a lot of people talk about. I actually quite enjoyed this one back in the day. It's not as bad as people say, although it is very twitchy. So I'll show you a bit of this one. It's kind of a Star Fox clone, in a way. Obviously nowhere is good.
Does it work in Game Boy Color? I'll find out. One second. Game Boy Color hasn't got any batteries, but I can try it in the SP. Yeah, it works fine on the SP. First time as well. But I know they did have a weird thing with the um, the PCBs that only work on certain revisions of original hardware, which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> I did just find these in the same drawer though, so we can try these out. Well, Easy Flash and the Game Boy Everdrive. I don't know where my GBA Everdrive's gone, but... Anyway, let's have a quick look at Star X. I think this game's fairly cheap. <laughs> yeah, there might be something with newer hardware that's stopping it from working. So yeah, this is Star X. Nothing super impressive or anything, but it's the closest you could get to Star Fox on the GBA. And it does feature some open open stages as well, which is pretty cool. It's just a shame that the reticle is so like so twitchy. And makes it a bit difficult to aim. But overall, it's not too bad. And you can use the L and R buttons to, looks like, break or do a barrel roll, as Peppy would say. I wonder if it can deflect the bullets, like in Star Fox. But the controls are nice, in terms of the ship's movement. It's just all a bit too twitchy. That's the only downside. And the music's not great. Also, the level design is pretty much non-existent. And my thumb's already getting tired of mashing the A button. Yeah, with the analog pocket, you need to make sure everything's really clean first, else it just will refuse to load anything. Well done! Level 1 finished. If I remember right, level 2 is like an open dogfight. Oh, no, not yet then. The balls are going to fall on me. Yeah. I don't know what the B button does. I'm guessing the bomb. I don't know. Speed up? Doesn't really seem to make that much difference though. Well, if that's speed up and if L is slow down and R is spin, then how do you use your bombs? Select? Wow. Okay, yeah, select. There's nothing on the screen to signify that you've used a bomb though. They just disappeared. Somehow I managed to dodge all that. I want to try and get to the next level because I remember being really impressed as a kid. This was one of those weird games that I picked up on a boot sale for like a pound. I was like, huh, this game looks kind of interesting. Um, I guess it is kind of interesting, but not really anything special.
The levels do drag on a bit though. Yeah, yeah, finally. Weapon upgrade. Okay, you can shoot the boulders so they don't fall on you. I don't know what that picture is supposed to be depicting. Uh, I don't think the bombs are doing anything on this section. Uh, what GBA games do you remember playing at uni? that you played the most. Is this, oh, this is the level I was thinking. With the super twitchy controls. Look how fast that camera moves. I don't really know what you're supposed to aim for, you know. Corrin, WarioWare, and Pokemon Crystal. Three brilliant games. I'm sure you're happy with them. Yeah, the controls are way too twitchy for this level. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be attacking. Am I just meant to destroy these? Whoa, okay. Out of nowhere, a giant thing appeared. Whoa, well, I got killed for no reason. Okay, I can find some enemy ships now. Still, it's way too fast to actually be playable. I never actually got past this level. Now I can see why. I always just remember being like, Whoa, I'm free to go wherever I want. Oh my god, they can't control it. Let's see if I can actually get past this level. I suppose I'm supposed to be going for the red. The red bits? They're the enemies? Maybe? What was it? Oh yeah, B is speed up. Ah! Some things are coming after me. I can see them on the map. I want to try and get past this stage because I've never seen what comes next. I need two more. Where did he go? Is that it? Do I have to destroy all of the... No, I don't have to destroy all of them, surely. I feel like I missed something. That's going to take forever if I need to get it all in. Do I need to go in there, maybe? No. Uh, no, apparently that's hurting me. Okay, I don't know what... I think I'm... Destroy all the mines. Oh no, it was destroy all the mines. Oh my god. I don't know if I can be bothered to do this. I thought it was going to be destroy all the enemies. I'll give it one more try anyway. Hope this isn't too boring for everyone. 
carry on doing whatever else you're doing tonight in the background. I mean, have me in the background. Whoa, suddenly a whole space station came out of nowhere. Oh my god, my thumb is getting cramped. Each one of these bullets I'm having to fire manually. Yeah, it said I need to destroy all the mines, which are all of the green dots on the map. Okay, I'll come back to that one. There's one. somewhere. They're trying to take me out at the same time. Still better than Star Fox Zero though, right? No, I don't actually mind Star Fox Zero. Once you get used to the controls. Five more. I can do it. I want to see what comes next. Three, two. Last one. Star Fox Zero was great, that's good. Or at least someone liked it. There it is, there's a the final one! Yeah! We got past it. Did you ever play the Star Fox Guard game that came with it as well? I think I only ever played that once. Wow, I remember places like this back on Earth. No time for sightseeing though. Scanning area. More fighter ships. Gun in place emplacements and tanks. This isn't going to be easy. Oh nice, now we've got another Star Fox style level. Wow. Or more like a complete Star Fox ripoff. This game really isn't that bad. I remember it getting really average to bad reviews. I don't know if you ever came across this one, Starlight, in your magazines. Wow, even more completely blatant Star Fox ripoffs. Yeah, God isn't really worth playing much. It's just like a little. Um, what would you call it? A little tower defense style mini game. Well, I thought the main game was pretty good. I'm I'm one of the weird people that thinks Assault is one of the best Star Fox games, though. So take that for what you will. Whether my Star Fox thoughts mean anything to you based on that. And I really enjoyed Star Fox Adventures too. I don't know whether it holds up well or not, but I remember really enjoying it back in the day. And I was amazed at the graphics at the time. Okay, I don't know whether the collision detection works on them or not. Seventy-three and fifty-four. Yeah, kind of what I thought. Just kind of average. 
I'd probably give it a five. It's kind of repetitive and the level design's not great. Anyway. That's probably enough for that game. Let's see what else have we got. What else did I want to test? Yes, let's try out the EverDrive. So let's see whether this will do anything at all. I'll be really interested to see. Maybe not, because I don't think it would be able to access the SD card. Okay, that's interesting. So nothing's showing up, but the light on the EverDrive itself is flashing. You can probably just about make it out. So I don't know what that means. Whether that means it can get power to it, but it's not recognizing it as a Game Boy, maybe. Yeah, it's not doing anything. But let's try the GBA one. It is not doing anything at all. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they would work on it, so. So no, you can't run any ROM hacks or any homebrews through this using using a flash cart, unfortunately. Yeah, probably because it doesn't know what to look for. And when it's loaded up, it can't read. They can't read from the SD because I don't think it can read back and forth to the cartridge. Let's try this game. This is another game that I got while I was at the London Gaming Market called Rhino Rumble. Well, I haven't even taken this one out of the box yet. This is another one that I found out about thanks to GBX magazine. There it is. Let's see what this is like. Apparently a fun but simple Mario style platformer. And again, it was thanks to Quang that I got this one for a really good price too. Well, I think it was a good price. Neither of us could really find any that have been sold complete in box. Got some funky music. Hello Rhino, would you like to come to the Rumble Jungle Party? Sure. Wow, nice, nice little menu. Okay, that's cool. I uh, need to put that on Game Boy mode so you can see the whole thing. There you go. Whoa, okay, that's really nice, really smooth. That music is awesome too. Okay, and I can shoot fireballs out of my mouth. The camera's good, it gives you a lot of range when you turn around. You see in front of you. Oh, this is like a Commodore 64 demo tape music. Can you jump on enemies? No. Okay, so you can't jump on them, you have to use your weird mouth gun. Wow. Yeah, genuinely really impressed with this. I can see why why people rate it as a good game. I don't know what's going on there. Is that because I'm hitting the ceiling? What's that monkey doing? Is he like a boss? Whoa! Why does the music go so hard for a little kid's platformer? Whoa! Whoa, that was close. Okay, so you can't jump underneath the platforms. No! Long levels, too. Yeah, you'd think so. It's a bit weird you can't jump on the enemies. Whoa. The soundtrack's really going crazy. 
right? I wonder if there's any more mechanics that get introduced. Ah! Game over. Okay. Oh, half game over. It starts you from the second level. Cool. Whoa. 500 euros. I mean, the condition of this one is basically new. There wasn't a scratch on it. And it, the instructions are in there complete as well. I didn't pay anywhere close to that, though. That's insane. I had a choice of three games. It was this, um, that sports game that I played at the start, and Rainbow Island. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot like a Commodore or Amiga game. I wonder who made it. Have a look if the developer was British. Oh, cool. Okay. Here's the new mechanic then. A little bit. I'm impressed with all the animation and the graphics look really nice. See, this is what Mona and the Witch's Cat could have been if they put the time into making a full game. Okay, do I need to jump all the way across to that one? Really big open levels too. I'm not sure why the end is breaching a when a waterfall. I can see it maybe getting a little repetitive. Unless this is like a boss fight or something. It might be. Okay, interesting. This level you have to go backwards. whether collecting that fruit does anything. Okay, yeah, I was trying to rush it a bit then. Wow. The Dutch. Okay, what, what are the other games? Are they for the Game Boy as well? Let's check out one of the other environments. Whoa. Yeah, you'd think, being a rhino, there would be some kind of, like, dash attack. Yeah, the, the music's kind of... Um, intense. Ah! I'm not sure where to go on this level. Let's see what one of the other areas is like. Let's go to the desert. Yeah, even here the music's crazy. And it just seems like random music as well. It's like, whoever the musician was, I don't think they ever played the game. They were just like, hey, let me, let me make some awesome chip tunes. Nothing wrong with that. Tiny Tunes for the Game Boy Color. Oh, Invader for the Game Boy Advance. That one's been on my eBay list for a long time. The cheapest I've found out is about a thousand pounds. It's insanely expensive. I guess I won't be going for a full set of us developers' games then. That was a cute little playing animation.
Okay, I can crawl under there. What? They went on to become Guerrilla Games? What the hell? Okay, wow. So, if you're a fan of Killzone or Horizon, this is... This is the precursor. What the hell? That's hilarious. I'm not sure what to do now. Am I missing something? Stand on there. What's wrong with that camel? Was that a trick? Going to the right then? Am I supposed to go this way? Ow. Okay, get to ride a hippo now. Interesting. No way, the end of the level was just to the left of the entrance. Okay. Well, I guess that's enough of that game. It seems interesting, but it does seem a little bit repetitive. But I'm glad I managed to get it for a good price if the only other one on there is 500. That's pretty insane. There is one of the games that I've wanted to play for a while, and I will use this opportunity to do just that. Which is, hopefully you'll see it in a second, another game that I spent too much money on. Blender Bros. And there's a really weird thing about this game, the fact that in Japan they actually made a manga for it, but the game never came out in Japan. It only came out in the UK and America, which is really, really strange. But at least it's an official cartridge, because I paid over £100 for this. So I'm glad that it's official. Ah, oh, Starlux got adverts again. No. Hey, To The Gates is back. How did Resi go? Whoa, more awesome music. So this is a really interesting game, it actually reminds me a lot of Kenobi, which was the launch title for the system. Uh, I'm not sure where the box is, I've got the box over there somewhere. But I've been really interested in trying this for a while now. Oh no, getting a headache, that's no good. So I don't really know much about this game at all, really. I only got it because apparently the developer Quintet had something to do with it. And it is a bit loud. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So let's try this. I think this is heading to the first level. And it looks like you can collect different characters that help you out in different ways throughout the game as well. So we've got one called Knuckle. You can attack together with this mini bro. Press the B button to use the ability. Right, it's the only one I've got so far. Press the L button to use the search ears. Check the arrows. We're using the search arrows. Okay, so you can use the red arrow to find another character to take with you. Um, they built. Apparently, they worked on the sound for this game. They built the sound engine, and for a few other GBA games as well. It was... I can't remember their name off the top of my head now. I don't really know how to play this yet, so... Do 
Do I need to carry that with me? I like the graphics. They're kind of pre-rendered, but they have nice thick outlines. What's down there? Whoa! Why does this sound like Mega Man music? Um, yeah, I can't remember who the sound person was for Quintet, but it was them that, after Quintet stopped making games, they carried on doing sound work for companies. I actually managed to find a separate list of GBA games they'd worked on. I know um, Super Robot... Robot Tyson? Robot Wars? Not not actual Robot Wars, but the, the Japanese one. Oh, I missed I missed one of the characters. Watch out for the fire traps. I'll send a change of panel if you touch a change of panel switch, you can change a me, bro. But I've only got one. Hey, like um like Donkey Kong, you can do a handstand to jump higher. That's cool. Yeah, it does sound like a Lechman stage. This bit doesn't, but that, that first bit does. Yeah. The interesting thing is that Quintet was originally set up as, as a company that specialises in all different areas of game design, and sound design was one of those areas of by expertise that they would offer their services to other companies for. And it's something that's not really documented online either. Um, and they they helped work on some other games as well, like um, Shenmue. That's what I was trying to think of. But there was, there was some other games too. But there's a load of random ones for the GBA. And I... Ow. I need to get that other switch. I feel like if I want to do my quintet retrospective properly, I need to... What's that? I want it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get over there. Yeah, kind of like Tosa. But it was after their website had shut down and they didn't actually officially mention any of the games, so people have been just piecing together which developers went to which companies afterwards. And I've been trying to make sense of it. But yeah, this was one of the games they worked on with Hudson. And it seems like a really fun game as well. I've still only found one character. So the idea is in the levels you go around and find these various characters that can help you out by using different kinds of special abilities and stuff. And you can touch them to swap to other ones, but I haven't got any other ones. There! Ah, I don't want to go back there. What is this chemical plant? Yeah, Masaya Hashimoto, that's him. And recently he actually went on their own quintet members, yeah. Masaya was the one I was thinking of though, because he went to start his own company after. And he's worked on a really obscure um, iPad game where you play as an egg. Or you have to try and hatch an egg or something. It was really weird. So I ended up downloading that as well. And I was curious as well to see whether there was any... Um, whether there was any sound effects or anything from other Quintet games that I'd recognise, but... I don't think there is. But it sounds good, I like the main the main theme.
I'm not doing very well here. Is he eating away at the platform? I think so. Yay, I did it. There is one other game I can show you if you're interested in Quintet and games that you probably didn't know they worked on. And you'll see exactly why on this one. Well, there's two others for the GBA that I've that I've got so far. So there was this one, which is a weird sequel to uh, I can't remember what it's called now. The Magic RPG on the GameCube. Mystic Heroes. I haven't really played this one yet, so I don't know whether there's anything obvious, obviously quintet about this one. But there definitely is with the other one, Robopon 2, which I also spent quite a bit of money trying to acquire. Unfortunately, no box or manual for that one, though. I did get something really exciting for my Quintet video as well, which I'll show you after this. But, man, I've been working on that video for so long now, I'm getting kind of fed up with it. Um... I obviously I have no idea what to do in this because it's all in Japanese, but I think this is one of the games that used Yeah, I've got no clue what's going on. 80% is pretty good. It seemed like a good game from what I've played so far. What was their conclusion about the game? What did they say about it? Yeah, this is just a standard turn-based role-playing game. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm winning. Anyway, yeah. I, this one had some involvement with Quintet stuff anyway, but the other one... You'll immediately notice how similar it is to, like, Terranigma and Soul Blazer and Illusion of Time. The editor got mixed up, why? Alright, see you, see you, Gion. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll probably call it a night in a minute as well. I've been streaming for three and a half hours now. My throat's going a bit dry. And I finished my monster a long time ago. Thank God that's an official cartridge, by the way. Because I spent way too much money on that. Anyway. Yeah, Starlight, why do you think the editor got mixed up on that review? Well, what what issue is that actually? I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind having a read of that. What issue number is it? Oh, that's not loading for some reason. Might need to try booting that one up again. Sweet RPG elements. Well, maybe there are RPG elements if you... Um, okay, I'm not sure what that means, but the cartridge is flashing orange for some reason. I wasn't doing that earlier. Oh, in the index bit, yeah. They, uh, they quite often got things wrong on that section, which I always thought was pretty funny. Oh, okay. So if I switch back to display capture, you can see what it's doing very slowly, although it looks like it might have got stuck. It says that it's right in the save file. I'm not sure what that's actually trying to do. Okay, it's very slowly. Can you see that? How much bigger do I need to make it? There you go. Write and save 8%. That might take a while. Okay. Yeah, they definitely got the wrong got the wrong game there. It's not made by Atari. I don't think it's got anything to do with Atari. Anyway, while that's doing that, because that might take a while, I'll show you the other thing I got, which is really exciting.
I was looking for the box for Blender Bros as well, but I can't find it. Anyway, this is what I got, and again, I'll, I'll go back on full screen for a sec. Again, I spent way too much money on this. Ridiculous amount of money just for a magazine, but I got this, which is Game Fan Volume 5, Issue 1 from 1997. And I got this magazine all the way from Canada for just one page, which is near the back. And I, I did already have this PDF downloaded, but I really wanted the physical magazine. Which is actually a really, really nice magazine. Like, look how fun and colourful the, the pages are in there. I was really enjoying reading through it, actually. It's a shame you don't get magazines like this anymore, which have, like, really nice, really fun layouts and stuff, and really, really fun reviews where you can really feel the the writer's personality shine through. And it was fun looking at the old adverts in there as well. Look at that computer that's being advertised up there. Look at the size of them speakers coming off it. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, let me show you why I actually got this. So, in GameFan, they did these sections called Japan Now, where they interviewed people. This one's a really interesting interview with Shinji Mikami before Resident Evil 2 came out. And you can see it's using some of the old beta screenshots. But that's not what I got it for, anyway. What I got it for is a quintet interview, which is a bit further on. It's also re interesting reading things like them getting excited over Final Fantasy 7 before that officially got released. They had a really, really big preview for the game in there as well, look at that, with cool little maps and top-down sections and there's some concept art in there and stuff. Anyway, that is why that is why I spent all this money to get this magazine all the way over from Canada. This interview here with Quintet, so... This interview was just after they'd left Enix and they went over to work with GDNet, which was basically a publisher for indie companies back then, so they could basically make their own games. But yeah, there's, um, trying to point on the camera, there's Tom Tomiyoshi Miyazaki, who was like the, the head of the company, who no one's seen anywhere. And there is Hashimoto. They spelled his name wrong. It's actually Masaya Hashimoto, not Misaki. Anyway, he's the guy who made the music in the game we were just playing. So, there you go, that's what he looks like. Well, probably doesn't look like that anymore, as this was like 25 or so years ago. But, yeah, really happy to have that magazine just for that page. And it is a really interesting interview as well. And then on the other side, it's talking about Langrisser, which is really cool. What does it say in issue 4, then? What's the correct text for that sorry i got a bit carried away there you can tell how excited i was to get this magazine and it came with a backing card as well so i can keep it safe but yeah that is something i've been looking for for a long time so i'm really happy to finally have it this save does not look like it's copied over at all it's only on 33 percent can i cancel it what will happen if I take the cart out? Okay, <laughs> that's very weird text. What were they even trying to say? It's been crafted with the love of a hot mother. Wow. Okay, that's one way of explaining the game. I'm going to try and take the cartridge out and and reset this because that is not... That is not doing anything. <laughs> you can see I had Task Manager open because I was trying to... And now we've got this up here. So, let's see whether we can actually just run the game without trying to transfer a save file. It's lost the window again. There we go. Fixed. Right, let's see if that just boots straight into the game now. Yeah, it looks like it. You can't see it, but it says loading game in the corner. Right, and I'll probably call it a night after this one.
because I'm getting really tired now. But I do want to go back and play more of Blender Bros, so maybe I'll stream that completely uh, in the future. Is this going to work? It's jumping for some reason. Okay, yeah it is. And if you've ever played any Quintet games before, you'll instantly recognize their style. Even though it doesn't mention them anywhere. It doesn't mention them anywhere at all in the game. It's, once again, Hudson. I think Hudson was on Blender Bros as well, wasn't it? Oh, there it just says Info Games on there, so I'm not sure. Hudson, Red, and Atlas. Anyway. Okay, another thing you'll notice is that the sprites and stuff look very similar to the Magical Hoshin game. But look at that font. Well, not this font, but the font for the main bit. Let's see if we can find someone to talk to in a second. I want to try and start this game from the beginning as well. Yeah, they were they did have Hudson on that one as well. I'm going to restart and we can start a new game so you can see it clearer. Maybe they just were working with Hudson then. I wonder whether that Super Robot game was Hudson as well. I'm still trying to I'm still trying to piece everything together in my retrospective, so if you ever do find out any really obscure information about Quintet, please let me know. Anyway, start a new game and watch the opening. Have a look at that. That's the exact font that was used in Terranigma. Well, used in all three of their main SNES games. I don't know whether the Game Boy Color one has the same thing as well. I haven't managed to pick that one up yet. This is Robopon 2, which is a sequel for the GBA. But yeah, it doesn't really have the same atmosphere as their other games, though. But it's still cool to see. And then they will just walk off. But yeah. I won't really get too much into that yet. But I'll just go and show you. Oh yeah, looking at what Treasure used to do as well. That would be interesting. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this stream up now so thank you everyone for joining me and there's the box for the operator as well so you can see what it came in obviously i'll do a lot better when it comes around to my full video but thanks for joining me anyway i hope you did enjoy taking a look at what this little thing here can do and just taking a look at a bunch of really cool games with me as well i've got games all over the table now i didn't even get around to playing most of the ones that i was planning to but anyway, thank you so much, and I'll try and do another stream soon. And I'll try and do a podcast soon as well, I keep meaning to do another one of them. Anyway, thanks so much guys, take care, see you all soon.